connected the workshop foundation in two sections. We called them side A and side B, the two sides, uh, six piers each. And the first side he did mostly on his own. I was working a lot on gardening and was in other places and the kids were doing their own thing. But because of time pressures on the second half, we really all bonded together and worked hard together to get that done. And so of course, the second half was much more fun. After the mudroom foundation was all sort of buttoned up and ready, uh, we were moving back to the shop foundation. We had six more piers to pour for the shop foundation. Um, at this point, the weather is changing. Uh, time is running short uh, for doing dirt work and pouring concrete. Um, and so it was sort of all hands on deck. We, uh, we would work into the evening um, under work light, uh, well past dark. Uh, with the kids in bed, we would we'd go out and we would we'd dig, we'd pour concrete, we'd backfill, just to get it done uh, as soon as possible before uh, freezing temperatures came along and before it was uh, snowing on us. So this one is a three foot ten. And then so distance to the next one is three foot ten plus seven foot nine. Plus, so this should be eleven seven looking pretty good. So we've done a little bit of mathematics in order to uh, figure out where the center of our uh, posts go. There's six posts per side, so six piers. The footer is this great big two six by three six by one foot thick concrete footer, which is why the holes are so big. And so in order to neaten up these holes, we gotta know where the center of it wants to be. And then we can sort of eyeball, if we know the, the measurement along this tape, we can eyeball whether it's square to the tape and goes far enough in all the directions. Um, we're not setting form for the footers unless the hole just ends up too big. Then we'll constrict it a little bit to conserve we don't want to pour more concrete than we absolutely have to, but we're pouring that footer just in the in the hole, and then we'll set form for the pier on top of that. Yep. It's in the middle. It's in the middle, so that's as good and averagey as you can get, right? So if you can dig a 2-6 by 3-6 hole in the right place and fill it up a foot deep with concrete, that's your footer. But his bucket's about two feet wide and with the shop only being 16 feet wide, he didn't have a great place to park the machine while he dug the second hole. You know, the hole opposite of the hole that he just dug. So for one side of the shop, they ended up pretty nice and square. For the other side of the shop, they got uh, out of square just a little bit. Um, but we just had to go in and clean that all up with uh, shovels. My number. Good job. So we got one. It's reasonably level and 
goes out as far as it's supposed to. And, uh, looks good. Yeah, We're at two down, four to go? Two down. Uh, I have this other one in my hand. Shovels down. Every single one. Yep. Something. Not every one. A lot yeah, of form. I probably could have done more on the other side, but I just didn't know how uh, how much work the concrete was going to be. So if I do a little bit of form work, it saves it saves concrete. So each footer has a uh, uh, rebar mesh. It has three pieces going one way and four pieces going the other way. So it, it just makes a little bit of a grid. But then up out of it, there's four verticals that come up uh, through the pier and they're tied together every foot going up with, uh, with uh, number three little square like this. And this is just me making stuff up as far as how to do it. But I just use my bench vise and a big piece of tube steel to grab it and bend it. I know there's tools out there. I know there's ways to do it. I don't have them or want to rent them. So I just kind of make it up with what I have. One minute, 56 seconds. To make one of those? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I'll call it two. Okay, two minutes. You want to try and beat your time? Or is it <laughs> Rebar bending on Danger Island. One thirty four. Really? I feel like I was going up faster. 
<laughs> what are you dead? Oh, I guess you have one a little more. Okay. A little tweak. I'm gonna call it 146 then. Okay. So like two minutes. Two minutes. We'll just call it two minutes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's how I feel. Okay. Empty truck? For now. I don't often really get in there and help Nick with things that are real construction projects. I like to hang out with him while he works, but most of the time I don't really get in there anyway. And with concrete in particular, I thought this is not something I'm going to be able to manage. I completely changed my mind. It actually turns out that concrete was a great place for me to help because it doesn't require the skill level that Nick's dozen years of carpentry experience gives him. Um, it's a little bit more just moving stuff around and I don't mind doing that. So I ended up being right in the middle of it and it helped to adjust my sense of what's possible. You know, I'm not an incredibly strong person. I'm a woman. I didn't really think that concrete, that's, that slinging 80 pound bags of concrete was something that I had on my to-do list. But as it turned out, I kind of liked it. All right, so the next thing you'll see is us standing up the frame of the mudroom. And with that, uh, we're all caught up on showing you our, our summertime work. And now uh, we will quickly jump into uh, snow-covered building scenes. Now we are working on framing out that mudroom and getting it closed in and getting one more dry spot around the house. I'm Nick. Thanks for watching. So how do you like working with your dad? I love it. Okay. He climbed and climbed until he got to the top. When he looked, he almost fainted. Oh. He saw... Dun dun dun! A giant castle. Jack hoped. Uh, Hop. Jack uh, hopped from cloud to cloud and squeezed under the door of the castle. This one's really scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oops. <laughs> Shouldn't say <they help? laughs> Jack. Jack looked around. He saw a snoozing giant. He ducked under a table. The giant woke up and said, Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. He looked under the table and said, There you are! Um, 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 
Is that the end? Yeah. The end. Boy, no cutting down a beanstalk in this one. Nope. That's the end of Jack. It says. The sad Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> the sad Jack and the Beanstalk. It's an alternate ending. Raise your hand if you like the play. Can I raise both hands? Yes. Yeah.